Explore the mystery at ShawUniversity.com. Thank you, Barry. Uh, I want to go ahead and... Uh, in Los Alamos National Laboratory, we have... A, uh, we never wear suits. And so one of the great uh, problems that I've had this morning is determining, do we button one button or two buttons? And then I look at Joe, and he buttons no buttons. <laughs> Okay, these are the title here is the analytical results on threads taken from the raised sampling area corner. And that's the other thing. I had always thought that this was Reyes. Now I understand it's Raz or Reyes. So I don't, uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and use Reyes because that's what I was used. Uh, and I even made a special call to Sue Benford, and she said Reyes. But some people say Raz, so I don't know. Uh, getting started on this was when Ray Rogers requested some help because he wanted an alpha particle source. And uh, I uh, got an alpha particle source for him. He was doing some studies on uh, the penetration of alpha particles into uh, flax. And so I went and to get uh, to satisfy that uh, need that he had, I uh, said, look, we can go get a Coleman lantern filament. That has a lot of alpha particles because it's got thoria. And so we, uh, I went and found one, and he said, now I need to know how many alpha particles are needed in this particular uh, uh, filament. So I said, I, I'll just go take it to the lab and we'll have it counted. But it's, it, it's easy to say that. But it is not so easy to do because once you go in with this, they say, oh, that's radioactive. You can't take it back out. So we had to work with that. and uh, But we had it counted anyway. And there was 50,000 alphas per filament. And actually, that's two pi. That's half the filament. And, uh, and there was 140,000 betas. So you can, you can imagine when people would go camping, and they're in their little tents, and they light their Coleman lanterns. They're lighting up to 200,000 deeper M. And so it's no wonder people are a little bit the way they are now because, <laughs> but at any rate, after uh, Ray did the alpha particle test, he went ahead and uh, then asked me, I need a calculation as to what is the expected depth of penetration. And so, being a radiochemist, I made that uh, calculation, and uh, he was very happy. But then, he gave a little bit of a uh, history of this shroud because I was, uh, I knew about the shroud, but I had never really gotten involved with uh, the shroud. But he said, I've got what he called a spliced thread sample. And I would like to have you analyze this. And, uh, oops, 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 oops. Uh, and he uh, looked at the, uh, he showed us the splice thread sample. And uh, he said, could you do XPS analysis? And I said, well, I have access to people who can do it. So he said, uh, that's what I would like very much if you could do an XPS. That's X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. 
And I had two people that uh, said that they would really like to do this. One of them was Roland Schultz, who is an expert on, on uh, XPS. And the other was Cyril O'Peel, who was his postdoc. Cyril O'Peel, as it turns out, was Father O'Peel because he was a postdoc from Boston College and he was a Jesuit. Well, Ray Rogers said, I like Jesuits because they can get things done. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> because <laughs> he had experience, I guess, at Turin with Jesuits that could get things done. Okay, after we did the XPS analysis, he said, what other instruments do you have access to? And I put a list together, and before I could get him that list, he passed away. And so uh, I had, as Barry said, asked Joan Rogers, what do, what do I do with this? And she said, just keep it. After about 18 months, enter Barry Schwartz. And uh, I had given him the list of uh, capabilities we had. And he said, continue the analysis. And then he said, also, uh, as you continue this analysis, uh, I want you to also work with Sue Benford because she's very knowledgeable in the shroud. And you're not a shroudy. I didn't know what a shroudy was either. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but at any rate, what did I have to offer? And uh, I explained to uh, Ray is that I had, for many years, been a project leader at uh, the lab. And, um, and I had, in all, one of the things we do at Los Alamos, and you all know this, we make nuclear weapons. But we also do a lot of research into uh, Homeland Security and, uh, and uh, nuclear energy and things of that nature. And uh, I said, I have an underground throughout the laboratory of people who have very high-powered instruments, and I have access to these people and these instruments because of the projects that I had been working on, which were classified for the most part, but uh, I gave him this list here, and it was high-resolution photomicroscopy. And uh, the, uh, the expert in that was Warren Steckel, and you'll see some of uh, this work. Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy with reflectance transmittance capability. Kevin Hubbard was the expert in that. 